Welcome to our God Spot for the table number three. My name is Pastor Doug, and I would love to know how your God Spots are going. You can reach out to me at 614-412-2144. Text the word God Spot to that number, or you can email me at doug at tcnd.org. Very easy to remember. Let me know how things are going. Let me know if you need some more resources, you have some questions, would like some guidance. We would love to be involved in uh, your God Spot, helping you out in that way. Now today, Pastor Doyle is going to take us in this God Spot to talk about a table in the presence of mine enemies. Might be an intimidating idea for some. For me, it's a very comforting idea of how God takes care of us even in the face of adversity. So can't wait to get into that. Why don't we pray and we will get started. Heavenly Father, you are the God of the table. We are ready to come to your table right now. Bring us there, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I'm so glad that we are having this opportunity to sit around together and talk about God's Word. Today, we're going to talk about the presence of mine enemies. You know where it comes from. It's Psalm 23. It says in Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. But then in verse 5, he says that God, he says, The Lord prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Somehow David understood this relationship different than I do. I don't want to go to dinner with my enemies, do you? But he realized that God was even with him in that time. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to take a moment and and hit pause. I want you to read through the 23rd Psalm and, and just outline all the ways that God provides for you and I when He is our shepherd and he's our caretaker. I want you to look at that for just a moment and then I'll be right back, okay? Hit the pause and read through Psalm 23 right now. Okay, so what did you learn? What did you learn about God's provision in your life? See, if God's going to take care of your rest and God's going to take care of your food, then he can take care of your enemies too, can't he? You wonder how David learned that. You know, as I was reading through the scripture and I was thinking about David's life, it's interesting. So David learned how to deal with enemies as a small child. It says that when he was a boy, that lions and bears would come up. I don't know how many of you would let your child have that job, right? I mean, I know kids that had paper routes. I worked on a farm, so yes, I had to deal with some tough animals, but never a lion or a bear. But David learned that God would help him succeed in that moment, and that's why he took on Goliath. Later on in David's life, he has to deal with the enemy of a father-in-law that threw a spear at him. You go through his life, he had to live among the Philistines. Then one day, he has his own son that rises up against him. What are some of the enemies that you've had to deal with in your life? And how has God shown up in the midst of that? In Psalm 139, 23 and 24, I want you to look at this as I read it. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thought. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. In the process of David's life, he realized that God could help him with the animal enemies, the the giant enemies in his life, the, the family problems that he faced. He had a lot of different enemies he had to deal with. But the greatest enemy that that had the greatest potential to cause destruction to his life was actually his own heart, was actually his own capacity to sin. I want you to take a moment and read some of these verses that I've given you. Look at the discussion guide and let's talk about what's really been the hardest part about dealing with the enemies in our life. And then let's imagine God stepping into that with us to help us deal with our enemies. And I'll be right back in just a moment. Hit the pause here and and look at the discussion guide one more time. Okay, so we've been talking about the different enemies we've had in our life. And I don't know about you, but let me list off some of the enemies I've had to face and how God's helped me through that. Yes, I've had individuals in my life that were coming against me. And that meant I had to forgive them, I had to work it out, or I had to change the situation in my life. Probably the ones that come to my mind have to do with when I was younger as a kid and the bullies at school that I had to deal with, and I had to decide how to handle those. God got me through that. But I also think about the enemies I had to face in my own life. And and for me, 
that was about um, my inability to learn like I wanted to. I had to overcome my learning difficulty in school. It was really hard for me to learn to read. But then I've also had to learn how to overcome my potential for sin. Some of you heard me tell the story. I was 13 years old. I was chewing tobacco and, and just my friends had kind of introduced it to me. And, and I knew I wasn't supposed to be doing that because I knew that wasn't, that wasn't a thing that my family did. We didn't smoke and, and do those things. And I'm chewing that tobacco. I had been denying it from my parents. And then one day, one day I'm, I'm walking along and I kind of hear God speak to me. And he says, you really like this. And I said, yeah. And he said, hmm. Well, that's just the way I kind of was relating to God in my life. And I realized that I really liked that. And you know what I learned in that? I have the potential for sin. That I grew up in a good Christian home and, and I was surrounded by some good positive people, but it only took a little bit of influence from some people that wanted me to go in a way that wasn't healthy for my life. See, that's, that's my greatest enemy. And I think David understood that we live in a world where our greatest enemy is our potential for sin. This is what I know. Jesus died on a cross so I could overcome that. And that day as a 13-year-old boy when I said, okay, I spat out the tobacco and I said, no, tobacco is not going to run my life. I'm not going to fall in love with nicotine. I'm going to stay in love with Jesus. I'm not going to choose any other source than God. And David had that same moment with, with Nathaniel the prophet. And he had to deal with all the sin that he'd already gotten involved in to create that point. And he had to move on from there, but not move away from some of the people. He still had to deal with the children, the relationship with Bathsheba and the kingdom. That didn't go away. See, God prepares a table for you in the midst of your sin and, and the family that's all created around that. So how do we deal with that? We deal with that through the cross of Jesus Christ, and we have to surrender that. I want to challenge you to take a few moments and read Psalm 51, the first six verses. It's been good to be with you today. Let me say a prayer before I go. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you're meeting us here. And it's our prayer that, that we would triumph over every sin that would come against us, every enemy that we would face. And God, if there are people enemies, if there's influences in our life that we need to deal with, show us how to deal with that in the loving, kind way that you speak about. In Jesus' name, amen. It's good to be with you.